Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. I'll admit, I had a rough day yesterday. I spent several hours reteaching myself how the UI scroll view works because this seemingly simple little control isn't as easy as it looks. But I stumbled upon one secret, which I plan on using every time I need to make something scrollable. So if you'd like a very quick demo of one thing you can do to take any control and make it scrollable in your app, come on in and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, first just a quick recap on how the scroll view works. The big trick to remembering how to lay out and pin and work with scroll views is to remember that there's actually two sets of constraints. So if we just drag a scroll view out here, the way these things work is we're gonna pin the scroll view to the top, leading, trailing, bottom edges of our view. That's how they work. But the layout inside, we're gonna to pin to the inner top, leading, trailing, bottom edges of our scroll view. So just remember with your scroll view, you've got your outer constraints, which we're gonna to pin to the view. And then we've got our inner constraints, where we're gonna do our design and pin that to the insides of the scroll view. There are some other subtleties with scroll view, but don't worry, we'll get into those later. But for now, that's all you need to know with regards to layout. Now you may be wondering, hey, what's the big deal? What's so hard about doing that? Like, why can't I just take my scroll view, pin it to the edges of my safe area, and uh, then go ahead and do my layout in there? Well, the challenge with doing that is as soon as you go to work with your scroll view and you start dropping some controls in there, like let's just say we want to drop a label, is it's notoriously hard to get these things pinned and laid out in such a way that they work. For example, I could just pin this to the uppermost edge of the view, of the scroll view here. So I've got it sitting up here. But you're notoriously going to get this type of feedback where your scroll view has ambiguous scrollable height or ambiguous scrollable width, or some constraint is missing, it's very hard to do a design where you're taking elements and pinning it directly to the scroll view. You can spend a lot of time trying to figure this out. And it has to do because scroll views need an unambiguous list of constraints as they go from top to bottom. Now I'm not saying you can't play with this and you can't figure it out, you absolutely can. But I wanna show you the number one trick I have found for helping me get good layouts that I can style easily the way I want that almost always resolves in a perfect scrollable experience. Okay, so the big trick is this. We're gonna embed a custom view inside our scroll view and then do all of our custom layout within that internal view that we just added. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start from scratch with a brand new uh, view controller here. We're just gonna come in, there's nothing here, just our plain old view. And let's go ahead and just add a plain old view to this UI view. So here we go, this is the plain old UI view. I'm gonna give it the color orange so I can just more clearly see its size and frame and things like that. And then let's go ahead and let's embed this in a scroll view. So this is the big trick. This view, this internal view we're adding, this is what we're gonna to pin to the insides of our scroll view. And once that's pinned, and once our scroll view is pinned, that orange custom view, that's gonna be our canvas where we can do any layout we want, just like we would with any other UI view. That's the trick. I find working directly with the scroll view with components very problematic, but by embedding this UI view in and doing my layout in there, the world and life just gets so much easier. So let's take our scroll view now and let's just embed it to the safe area of our view. So we can just take that, I'm just hitting zero and tab and I'm just gonna take my scroll view, which I've got selected here, add the four constraints and that's gonna pin it to the outsides of my parent view. Now I'm gonna help it out a bit. I'm just gonna drag it up to these corners. I, say, I find sometimes this helps with Interface Builder if you can just give it some hints like that. And then this internal view here, this is the one, I'm gonna rename this content view, just to give it a different name than the parent view. And now this one, we're gonna to pin to the insides of the scroll view. But we're not gonna do it down here using these attributes. What I find works best is to actually select this and then control drag out 
to this content layout guide within the scroll view. Now this is something I didn't even know was there because usually I build all my views programmatically, but I'm working on a project that uses nibs, so I've been playing with nibs a lot. And what I noticed in scroll view is these two layout guides here. We want the content layout guide. You're gonna control drag from our custom view into there, and you're gonna add all four of these constraints. We're gonna go leading, we're gonna control drag and go top space, we're gonna control drag and go trailing. And as you can see, every time I do this, one of these dots fills in. So I've got three dots representing those constraints. Now I'm gonna do the bottom. Now watch this. I'm also gonna take this content view and I'm gonna set its width equal to the width, not of the scroll view, but of the parent view up here like this, equal widths. This is what enables our scroll views to scroll vertically. If I wanted to scroll horizontally, I would go equal height. But that's one thing that it's very easy to get confused about. You will sometimes get problems if you set the content view width to the same as the scroll view width. So you wanna drag that up all the way to the parent view and make sure you do that. Now our view still here doesn't look so hot. Let's see if we can just drag our internal view out to the edges just to get it more or less lined up with where we would visually want it to be. Even those constraints are right. We're just gonna do this. But now let's just review all of our constraints. We've got our scroll view going out to the edges. This isn't quite right. We're gonna fix this in a second. I don't want 0.5 though. I want it to be more like one. So I'm just gonna delete that. But this one you'll notice here, when we did the drag, it took our view where it was and it added as constants the values of how far our internal view was from the edges of the scroll view. So in this case, I'm just gonna go by and get rid of all these constants here. I want these to be zero because I want my internal view to be completely flush and up against my scroll view. So I'm just going to each one of these one at a time, taking the value that was added and just making it at zero so that my internal view should now be completely flush with my scroll view. Now I'm just gonna re-add that width. I'm gonna go content view up to view here and go equal widths. And now look at, there's no multiplier there. That's much better. I don't want it to be 0.5 or half as wide, which is what it did when I initially added that constraint. I want it to be one. So this is looking good. So our view still is not gonna lay out nice. It's still complaining. I don't know the Y constraints or the Y position for your scroll view. And that's because our scroll view doesn't know, doesn't have any content. It doesn't know how big anything is. So this is okay though, but we're set up here and this is really nice. We're now ready to do whatever layout in here we want to do. Let's start with something simple like a label. Okay, so let's just go add a label into our inner view. Now this orange area is great. This is our canvas where we can do whatever we want. So I'm just gonna take this and I wanna pin it to, I eventually want this label, I'm gonna put a lot of text in here and I wanna to demonstrate to you that it can scroll. So I'm gonna pin it to all the edges of my content view, which I can double check and see content view. Yeah, that's what I wanna to go to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it to the edges of my content view. I'm gonna add those four constraints and voila, it's collapsed now and it's pulled the content view up and everything is in there really nice. I'll just make this a bit bigger, whoops, so we can see what's going on. This is good, this is what we want. We can take this label now, and let's say we wanna make it multi-line. I'm gonna change this to zero. I'm gonna make it word wrap. And now we can put a whole bunch of content in there and see if this thing's actually gonna scroll. So to get some text, I'm just gonna Google for lorem ipsum, just get some nice Latin in there. And let's take these chunk of words here copy and I'm just gonna bring that over and I'm gonna put that into my label here as text and hit enter and this is good. I can see how my label's multi-line. It's all coming down here nicely. It's still not quite enough to scroll really. I like it a bit longer. So what I'll do is I'll come in here again and I'll just add a little more text. I'll copy that in maybe three more times, hit enter. And now I've got some really long text which should scroll off the screen if I go Command-R now, we bring the simulator up, voila, 
we have a scrollable label containing lots of text. That's the big secret, embedding that custom view in there. And then once you've got it laid out using those special techniques I showed you, this is your canvas, you can do whatever you want in here. I find it just makes scroll views so much easier to work with, so much easier to use. You can now do anything you want within a regular view just by doing all your good regular auto layout stuff. Well, there you have it, folks. My number one tip for working with scroll views. I hope you find that helpful. Don't feel discouraged if you find you're banging your head on these things. They're not intuitive. They do take some getting used to, and uh, I've spent a lot of time <laughs> trying to wrestle with these things and just get things to do what I want to do within a scroll view. Scroll views are amazing. They're why a lot of people love Apple devices and iOS particular. It's just a beautiful, smooth thing. And a real common use case for why you want to know how to do this professionally is you're going to do a layout sometimes on a bigger device phone and then someone from UX or QA is going to come by and say, hey, this doesn't render nicely in a smaller device like an iPhone 6 or even a 5S. Knowing how to take a view you've already built, embedding it in a scrollable view with this custom view technique I just showed you will enable you to take any view you want out there and make it scrollable. Okay, thank you so much for coming everyone. Hope that was useful. Uh, if you do find that useful, do hit like, do hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time. All right, thanks so much for coming. We'll see you, bye-bye.